Today we're going to talk about audio file processor and I'm going to show you how to make tricks with audio file processor and um, one of the tricks will be if we now we can open here and we have this here called Technobase 01 can't drag it into the camera but that's not necessary uh, listen so that's how it sounds uh, natively but we're also going to make it sound like this all through a pro uh, uh, a project uh, and we're going to look at that but we're also going to look at how to um, use the different uh, settings in audio file processor uh, in order to uh, to learn about uh, the, the, the different way audio file processor can be used and to uh, understand the tricks that we can make with audio file processor. So it's all about audio file processor or AFP in elements. Right. Um, so when we uh, have a uh, audio file processor we can take one here, just put it in, make it sure it's gonna sound anything like it looks like this. We all know that. And the default audio file processor has this disable loop um, button active. That is uh, the active uh, that is the standard of audio file processor. And if we play uh, on our uh, base note we have the correct pitch and length uh, meaning that we are going to get the original recorded um, uh, sample played as it was intended. Listen. So that's how the original sample sounds in audio file processor. If we on the other hand played in a uh, lower position in the piano row uh, on the piano sorry um, it'll sound like this that's not good um, and if we play it uh, in a higher position it'll sound something like this and that's even worse so the first thing we can um, um, make a statement about is that we can only play correctly if we are playing uh, the sample on the bass note. That's the only place the sample will have its correct pitch and the correct length um, of the sample right here on the bass note. Um, the A4 standard. You can change that of course, but you always have, if, if we change it, it will be here. Play it's always on the bass note and standard that is A4. So, good. Um, that was the first thing. If you want to have the sample played in correct pitch and correct length, it's only in the position of the bass note. Also in piano roll, we'll have to find A4 and put the notes in there. So we are playing here in the uh, disable loop position, which is default. But we also have the possibility of playing as loop. It looks like this. And you can see it will toggle off the disable and it will toggle in the enable loop. And if we play now, um, this would be good if I have this inside here now. This whole sample is looped. As long as I hold this in, the 
sample will be looped in contrary to not looped it stops by itself so that was the uh, the, the usage of enable loop will have the sample looping. It didn't loop perfectly though. Listen again. You can hear in the, uh, in the end of the sample. Uh, but we can change that with these controllers here. We have an endpoint and we have a start point controller. And as you can see, when I move these, we have a, uh, a part rather of the um, of the sample that is inside a um, bluish area, and we have something that is out of the bluish area. And it shouldn't be too difficult to understand that if I play now here in no loop, I'll get a uh, selection plate but it is not looped if I add the loop it goes like that it is looped. but only the part that is selected so if we find a part that is selected we call some move it with, with uh, these guys actually um, if we find a part that we like to have as um, a selection in this loop then we will have um, the next problem would be to uh, to get that to loop perfectly and over a, a controllable number of bars I'm moving the middle parts of the selection see that moving the middle part. That is the part that is going to be in the repeat section. Now if we take the middle part, this guy here, loop back point it's called, and we're gonna play this as a single shot, as a without looping, uh, it sounds like this. Right. If I played with looping, will not be surprised that it's going to loop. Right. But if I move this guy here, for instance, and just put it there, and I play it again, then listen what happens. Now it's only this section the darker bluish section that is looped. It starts here and then it starts looping from here. Listen again. And then that's only the part that's in here. We can make this more. Now it's a bigger part. Listen. we can make it ridiculous like that only the part between the endpoint and the loop point will loop so if we want the whole part to be in the loop we'll have to put it at the start point position then everything will loop that's important now everything inside the bluish area loops. Then we have something here called play over notes, play across notes actually. What does that do? Well, let's take a look at song editor. We here have, uh, just solo that, uh, we here have uh, a, 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 a track I have called Retrigger. And let's open this and we'll play that now. Listen.
every time it meets a new node, it will restart the sample or it will re-trigger the sample. Listen again. But if we on the other hand select close that play over notes. With the same notes, the same position, the same length and the same um, quantification, uh, quantification. Listen. Whoa. Now, these notes will play the whole sample continuously over all notes and that's what play across notes mean the whole sample will be played from start point to end point then we have one that's pretty easy to understand we go back here we say reverse the sample and if you take a look at um, what happens here now when I uh, it will simply um, invert the sample look so like that and when I play it will be backwards that can be used for a lot of fun stuff uh, for instance if you make a uh, riser you can start uh, in uh, the reverse and you can uh, glue it together with the same riser, same uh, sample uh, played uh, in um, a normal direction and that actually sounds very good I haven't made that but um, you, you can experiment with that okay and we have one here that also says enable loop and um, of course I have to put this back here again um, and then it reverse the second part. Listen again. It's only the part that is looped that is reversed. So it's reversing the looped selection part. First it takes it all and then it goes to, uh, to looping but that will be reversed. Listen. So that's the purpose of this guy. Enable loop, it just says that's that's just we have to, to, to fix that. It should enable reverse loop looping. It takes this, play it to this position, and then it goes to this position, but play it in reverse, meaning that it actually starts from here, going there, 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 in that direction. That's a fun. <laughs> Right. So those are the uh, the controllers that we have in Audio File Processor, and um, we also have the possibility of um, uh, expanding um, the view. You you if you roll your mouse wheel, which of course has been ruined on my mouse. So um, I really can't do that right now but you will zoom in on the area that is in between the um, uh, the uh, start point and the end point and that's rather useful because you will always like to find a place to put the start point and end point where you are at the as close as possible on the zero line so what about this guy now how did that? Um, how what, how did we make that? Um, I have to well, go in uh, here and enable that guy there also. Because 
that wasn't the whole uh, loop. That was a selection looped over in Song Editor. Right? So to do that, we go into Beat and Bass uh, Editor and we um, select to open in piano roll. Um, that guy there, open in piano roll. And when I open that in piano roll, it looks like this. You can see I have put the note on A4. So it's the bass note and hence it will be played in the correct speed and with the correct length. But I have also done another thing. Done another thing. I have found the soft spot where this note exactly reaches a um, position where we have a bar divider. To be able to do that, I have forced, been forced to find a time signature that fits exactly that position. You can see if I change this time signature, look at the thing happening here. See, now it's not on the divider. And it has to be exactly on the divider. Not almost, but exactly on the divider. If it's not exactly on the divider, you will have a gap in your, um, um, uh, in your playback. So that was the first thing. But we also have to find the exact correct uh, change that the exact correct uh, it's there sorry the exact correct selection here that will fit uh, in, in, in respect to what you want to hear so it's not a given thing that any selection will be able to loop like this it's not at all a given select uh, a, a given uh, uh, thing but you can experiment with the end and start point the loop point the time signature and uh, get this effect which actually mean that you're making a virtual cutting of the original which of course went like this you make a virtual uh, cut out of this uh, uh, original sample creating this sample it has a lot to do with trial and error I have to admit to that but it's possible as you can see so that was Audio File Processor and Trigger is that you can do in Audio File Processor or with Audio File Processor. It's up to you. Um, and with that, I'll just say I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and bye-bye. Uh,